Hey guys, it's Amanda, and I hope that seeing this new angle of my bedroom brings you the same level of excitement you felt when your favorite childhood cartoon character finally changed into a new outfit. Um, anyway, long time no video, but let's just dive in. As you can probably tell from the title, today I want to discuss the pattern of white male love interests in Mindy Kaling's shows. So this is not a new controversy or qualm that people have with Mindy's work. Ever since 2012, when she created and starred in her hit TV show, The Mindy Project, people noticed a common theme with her love interests, and it was the color of their skin. There are dozens of articles detailing Mindy's taste, which can pretty much be summed up into 50 shades of beige. The discourse has been reignited thanks to the questionable casting choice of almost exclusively white male love interests on one of Mindy Kaling's latest productions, The Sex Lies of College Girls. If you're looking for a video that spews vitriol and hate towards Mindy Kaling, this honestly isn't it. I've enjoyed a lot of her work, and I think she's a great inspiration for young women of color who want to make it in the entertainment industry, or simply want to see someone who looks like them represented on screen. This isn't to say she's perfect, nor is this a defense of her casting choices. Honestly, I just want to have more of a nuanced exploration of her tendency to write primarily white love interests into her content. I really don't think it's a black and white or brown and white issue, and honestly, most of the controversy surrounding Kaling's writing choices has to do with the fact that Mindy doesn't have many peers who look like her in the industry. When she produced The Mindy Project in 2012, she became the first Indian American to have her own network show. And when she started writing for The Office in 2004, she was famously the only person of color and woman in the writer's room. So in this video, I really just want to explore why Mindy's casting of white male love interests is so scrutinized. Are these choices inherently problematic? Or is it because there's virtually no other Indian American women in Hollywood with a voice as far reaching as hers? Or maybe it's both. But I don't think we can get to that answer without starting with some context, so let's go back to the beginning. Mindy was born and raised in Lily White, Cambridge, Massachusetts. From what I remember in her first essay collection, Is Everybody Hanging Out Without Me?, she was one of a few Indian American kids in her community and described herself as a chubby, nerdy kid who was obsessed with comedy. She attended Dartmouth College, a prestigious, predominantly white institution where she was involved in theater, improv, and even wrote for the college's humor magazine. Anyway, after graduating from college, Mindy moved to New York because that's what you do when you go to college in New England. For a few months, she worked as a babysitter and a production assistant, but got her big break in August 2002 after portraying Ben Affleck in an off-Broadway play called Matt and Ben, which she co-wrote with her college best friend. The play drummed up a lot of buzz, and it's how Mindy got on the radar of Greg Daniels, the then showrunner of the American adaptation of The Office. After reading one of her spec scripts, Daniels hired Kaling as a writer-performer. Like I mentioned earlier, at the time, Mindy was the only woman and only person of color in the writer's room. In fact, she was a diversity hire. Sound familiar? She's like a diversity hire or something, man. She'll be here 13 weeks, she's like a single mom or something. At the time, NBC had a diversity initiative, and Kaling recalls that she was grateful, albeit embarrassed, because she didn't want other people to think that was the only reason she was hired. She worked hard to prove herself, climbed the ranks of the writer's room, and ended up writing, starring, directing, and producing episodes of The Office until its final season. It's where she met her co-star, turned on-again, off-again boyfriend, turned godfather of her children, BJ Novak. After The Office, Mindy ventured to create and star in her own TV show, The Mindy Project. 
The series centers around the titular character Mindy Lahiri, an Indian American OBGYN, navigating her personal and professional life in New York City. It's no Grey's Anatomy, nor is it a Sex in the City copycat. It's a cross between a rom-com and workplace comedy. It's set primarily in the office where Dr. Lahiri works, but it doesn't really get into the weeds of medicine. Rather, it fixates on the complicated web of Dr. Lahiri's love life. And the white elephant in the room is that almost all of her romantic interests are of the Caucasian persuasion. This is a big issue that people, particularly people of color, had with the show. I do think it's worth mentioning though that while the Mindy Project could have been more progressive in its casting, it still broke a lot of barriers in entertainment. Kaling became the first Indian American to create and star in her own network television show. In a 2019 article for Vanity Fair, writer Samita Mukhopadhyay interviews Mindy Kaling and reflects on the show's revolutionary impact, noting that Kaling turned one of the most common tropes about Indian Americans on its head the aspiring straight A student who becomes a physician. Lahiri is a doctor, but she is not quiet or particularly geeky. She takes up space, sometimes to the point of narcissism, dresses in bright colors, subsists on rom-coms, she dates, and she likes sex. She is also sometimes offensive. This was no good Indian girl. When the Mindy Project aired, several publications and fans detailed their qualms with Mindy Kaling writing Dr. Lahiri as an Indian American woman who almost exclusively dates white dudes. In that same Vanity Fair interview, Mukhodiape writes, Kaling says she has grappled with these criticisms and looking back says she might have cast those roles differently. But at the time, these storylines simply felt true to her own experiences. White guys were the ones who hit on me, Indian men didn't. I think that's what's sort of fascinating about this discourse. There's an answer to, oh my gosh, why does Mindy Kaling keep on writing self-inserts that involve her dating white dudes? And it's simply, that's what she knows. I think it is quite obvious, given that a defining part of Mindy Kaling's experiences involve her being an outsider because of her Indian heritage, and she's lamented that she grew up watching classic American, aka all-white, rom-coms. Mindy has said that she wanted to create this type of content starring someone who looks like her. Again, back to that Vanity Fair interview, she says, I never saw myself in these movies, a chubby, nerdy Indian girl getting the guy at the end. They were sort of a wish fulfillment. So that's exactly what she did with the Mindy Project. She changed the typical white heroine to look like herself. However, she didn't change the appearance of the guy at the end, aka the white love interest. So is that inherently problematic? I think this is where it gets murky. On one hand, this is Mindy's experience. She fantasized about these white dreamboats because that's who was casted in the rom-coms she watched religiously, and she says that white guys are the ones who hit on her, so it's not surprising that this is who she writes in as the romantic interests in her own shows. Also, Mindy is a dark-skinned Indian woman, and Indian beauty standards famously favor those with lighter complexions. It's possible that due to colorism, Mindy didn't feel particularly desired within her own culture and saw dating white guys as a refuge from it. It's just speculation, but I think it's important to point out. So when or why does Mindy Kaling's depiction of female characters of color with primarily white love interests become problematic? It's when the love and affection of these white dudes is put on a pedestal. In the Mindy Project, I don't think the omission of POC love interests was out of malice. And honestly, until you actually put a show out there, the writing process kind of exists in a vacuum. So especially in the first season, I don't think that Mindy anticipated that people would have an issue with the color of her love interest skin. The only statement she was overtly making was, a chubby Indian girl can be the love interest too. Let's talk about the fact that of the deeper meaning behind you achieving so much in your career. You said that it's so important for women who look like me, look like you, to find that they can be beautiful or objects of love, attention, 
and affection. However, who that affection comes from matters. If Dr. Lahiri dated mostly Indian men, it would be seen as natural, or at least expected. There would be no reason for cause celebra because dating within your race is seen as the default. But because most of Dr. Lahiri's relationships were with white men, it was clear that she had a preference, or at the very least, a pattern. Sure, people can have whatever racial preferences they want when it comes to dating, but they always point back to a deeper societal issue, racism. In a 2010 piece for Jezebel, Latoya Peterson put it like this, it is disingenuous to pretend that these preferences are not informed by society and are not informed by racist ideas. Think about it. If our fickle hearts have the capacity to love people who are abusive to us, what makes people think that love is somehow immune to or above racism? Groups of color internalize prejudices and enact them through color-struck ideas about light skin being more attractive than dark skin or keen features being more attractive than broader ones. So Dr. Lahiri is a fictional character who, among her many flaws, probably has internalized racism. The thing is, internalized racism is a real thing and it can definitely manifest itself in hateful and harmful ways, and sometimes it can manifest itself as an Indian American woman only dating white dudes because that's what she was taught is desirable. It's hard because where is the line between expressing truth and experience with what appears to be internalized racism and then creating something that perpetuates those same ideas that hurt you? Honestly, I have no idea. On one hand, the Mindy Project is extremely progressive for allowing a curvy, dark-skinned Indian American woman to be the love interest. On the other hand, it kind of exalts being the recipient of a bunch of mediocre white dudes' affection. So this brings me to yet another question. Is it Mindy Kaling's responsibility to represent diverse and multicultural love interests in her work, even if that's not her experience? I think if you asked her that in 2013, she would have said, hell no. In an interview for Entertainment Weekly, Kaling said, do people really wonder on other shows if female leads are dating multicultural people? Like I owe it to every race and minority and beleaguered person. I have to become the United Nations of shows. Clearly, Mindy didn't set out to represent all Indian American or minority experiences. She set out to represent herself. That's what writers are told to do, write what you know, because that's what feels the most authentic. But when you're the only Indian American woman writer in that particular position, writing what you know can be conflated with writing for your entire demographic's experience. In a 2015 article for Talking Points Memo, Samita Mukhodipe again aptly put it like this. Kaling wants to be a comedian and artist, not an activist, and I'm sure her frustration with having to talk about race is about the unfair expectations put on actors of color. She doesn't have the luxury of being an artist. She has become the object of desire for us, a generation of South Asians who didn't feel part of the race narrative, hoping for an icon who perfectly encapsulates the complexity of our existence, which is frankly impossible. Though she wasn't always eager to embrace it, it seems like in more recent years, Mindy has warmed up to her role as female Indian American film and television pioneer and writer of diverse roles, even if she didn't necessarily sign up for it. This is true, but it sounds like syrupy. It's been amazing to elevate all these young women, particularly young women of color, yeah. to these leading roles. <laughs> After the Mindy Project, she co-created the coming-of-age comedy drama series Never Have I Ever. The show follows the story of a first-generation Indian American high school student named Davy as she navigates the ups and downs of her personal and academic life. Davy is coping with the recent death of her father and struggling to fit in at her high school. She is determined to reinvent herself and improve her social status but her efforts are often hampered by her family's traditional values and her own insecurities. As the series progresses, Davy's character develops and matures. She starts to learn about herself, her heritage, and her relationship with her mother, father, and culture. 
Along the way, she also faces typical teenage struggles such as fitting in, dating, and discovering her own identity. I personally haven't seen the show, but overall, it seems like Never Have I Ever is known for its honest, relatable, and authentic representation of the Indian American community and the struggles of growing up as a first-generation immigrant. The show also deals with themes of grief, family, culture, and identity, and it's praised for its diverse and inclusive cast and its representation of the Indian American culture in a nuanced and realistic way. This is a far cry from the criticism that the Mindy Project received for essentially being too whitewashed. Shortly after releasing Never Have I Ever, Kaylin co-created yet another coming-of-age comedy drama series called The Sex Lives of College Girls. This show follows the lives of four 18-year-old freshman roommates at the fictional Essex College in Vermont, covering their sexually active lifestyle as they deal with the struggles and hardships of college and adulthood. Hijinks ensue. The Sex Lives of College Girls has also been received positively and, like Never Have I Ever, has earned praise for its diverse casting choices. Though Never Have I Ever and The Sex Lives of College Girls were generally received much more positively than Kaling's representation of the Indian American experience in The Mindy Project, they are not completely above reproach. And I feel like this started to come to light on social media in the few days after the season finale of The Sex Lies of College Girls. Basically, in season two of the show, the only couple involving two characters of color, specifically two black people, broke up, um, and they both ended up with white love interests. A lot of people were upset by this since it isn't common to see two people of color in relationships in the Mindy Kaling cinematic universe. And now we have the sex lives of college girls, Bella and Eric. Do you see a pattern? I was gonna let it go and not say anything until this preference started affecting the other characters because they broke up the black couple so they can now presumably put this character with the white guy. Mindy, please. Um, soon after, the allegations of Kaling's problematic obsession with white men once again resurfaced, this time with her new shows to provide farther evidence of the issue. In a piece titled, Mindy Kaling, It's Getting Weird, Shaylee Corrine writes, Here's where the real problem lies for me. It's not just that her characters always end up with white men, but it's specifically that these brilliant women of color end up with white dudes who are awful towards them. Corrine notes that Ben, Davy's primary love interest in Never Have I Ever, is a white guy who constantly belittles her intelligence. And in The Sex Lies of College Girls, Bella's love interest, Eric, initially doesn't believe her after she is sexually assaulted. And Whitney's fling, Andrew, boisterously doubts her ability to pass organic chemistry. It's representative of that old toxic assumption that boys bully you when they like you. The reality is, boys bully you when they are emotionally immature and often misogynistic. So what kind of message is Kaling sending when her antagonistic white characters end up with women of color. Maybe I'm giving Mindy too much benefit of the doubt, but I truly don't think she intends to send harmful messages through her content. I think she continues to write from her experience, and that's why we see these patterns in her work. But still, this leaves me wondering, is representing something on screen the same thing as condoning it? And if you are representing something objectively not good, like racism, how do you make it clear that you don't approve of it? Maybe you make your character not end up with racist white dudes. And to be fair, by the end of The Sex Lies of College Girls, Whitney is over Andrew and wants to get back together with her black ex-boyfriend, Kanan, but he is inexplicably snatched up by the gravitational pull of Kimberly. That's for another day. Um, <laughs> while Bella actually ruins her chances with Eric by cheating on him with a well-known comedian in an attempt to secure an internship. Flawless characters who don't make bad or embarrassing or wrong decisions are boring, but when they redeem themselves or right their wrongs or finally decide to end things with a guy who doesn't respect them, 
we empathize with them. Okay, so I feel like I've been talking about this forever, so let's wrap it up. Like I said in the beginning, I think discussing the context of Mindy Kaling while discussing her work is incredibly important. She's an Indian American woman who seems to have grown up feeling othered by her Indian heritage, which led her to internalize the message that whiteness is aspirational. This is not uncommon. I can relate to it as a black person too but her work should progress beyond these limiting assumptions, and thankfully it has. However, it's unrealistic to think that even 10 years later, it'll be perfect. Not to mention, progress isn't always linear, and ultimately, one person can't speak for the experience of millions. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I feel like there are a lot of discussions you can have about the Mindy Kaling cinematic universe. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.